Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there he may be also. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved and the mountains fall in the heart of the sea, and though the waters roar and the mountains quake, with the surgeon. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Could you please be seated for a few minutes? Let me take time out this morning to extend greetings to every one of you who is here at this Thanksgiving service for the late Devon McClucken. And I want to recognize the presence of the, the ministers who are here and their, their spouses. I recognize the, the moderator, Sister Brown. I recognize the, the members from the Glen Devon and the Flankers New Testament Church. I recognize the, the family members who are here. And I want to express condolences to every one of you. No, and I do so on behalf of Sister Louis in her absence, the officers and members of the Glendevon Church. I want to say to you, be strong in the Lord. And I know that his grace is sufficient to, to keep you as you go through the moment of bereavement. I want to recognize also the, the well-wishers and those of you who are joining via the, the social media. Sorry, you are unable to be here physically, but I'm very happy that you are able to, to join us. I believe that today as we celebrate the life of this wonderful servant of the Lord, God's name will be glorified. I now invite our dear Sister Brown, who is the moderator for this evening, morning's Thanksgiving service to to take charge. Could you please, you know, accept her in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, each and every one. I know the welcome was extended, but I'd just like to welcome our host pastor, Bishop James Lewis. On the platform, we have Bishop Robinson and Reverend Shane Gillett. Um, just a warm welcome to you all. I'd also like to extend my greetings to all those that are in the audience and also to the bereaved family. At this time, I'm going to ask the congregation to stand and we are going to sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Present. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou Not as I 
indeed God's faithfulness is great God's faithfulness is great at this time I'll invite Bishop O'Neill Brown for the opening prayer let's pray father in heaven one more time we come before you it's indeed a sad day. It's indeed a sad day. But you said in your words, in everything, we are to give you thanks. And indeed this morning, even though our hearts may be saddened because we have lo lost our dear brother Terry, we are looking to you because we know that our hope lies in you. We are not like men, Lord God, who are looking, Lord God. They have no hope, but we know our hope lies in you. So this morning, we stand to say thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for the life of our dear brother Terry. Thank you, Lord God, that he has made such an impact on us, Lord Jesus, that we can gather here this morning, Lord God, to celebrate his life. Lord God, we may be in mourning, but Lord God, we are giving you all the glory. We are giving you all the praise because it's in you that we live, we move, and have our being. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that you will just comfort the family at this time. I pray in the name of Jesus that your perfect will be done in the order of this service. I give you everything today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And as we continue with the program, I would just like to ask Gwendolyn McLaughlin, cousin, to come, and the lesson will be taken from Matthew 5, verse 1 to 12. Are you hearing me? Okay. <laughs> all protocols observing this place this morning. God is good amidst all the circumstances. We're here and we're still giving him praise. Amen? Amen. 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 First lesson is taken from Matthew's five, Matthew five, sorry, and we'll read from verse one through to twelve. And it reads thus. And seeing the multitudes 
he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are he when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Here ends a portion of God's word. We honor it by saying thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. We continue to glorify God. It may be looking bleak outside, we may be in a solemn mood, a sad mood, but we are going to rejoice and we are going to give God thanks. If we know one thing about Terry is that he was a music man. He was a music man. And we are not going to sit here today and we are going to just sit around. We are going to sing and we are going to lift our voices whenever it's time for singing. I'm going to say something. I'm going to set myself clear. I am not a singer. So if you hear me start a song, me I beg you just catch it for me. And you see, if me I falter with it, just raise it on the right note, all right? So just work with me up here, all right? We are looking for a city, you know. Terry is in that city now. Terry is in that city. And I remember when I got the text that he had passed, I just could not understand. But I remember... Rev saying, Bishop McLaughlin saying, he has joined the praise band in heaven. And we can rejoice with that. Can we re rejoice with that? Amen. Amen. Looking for a city. You know that song? Where we'll never die. There the sainted millions never say goodbye. There we'll meet our Savior and our loved ones too. Come, O oh Holy Spirit, all our hopes renew. Now that you know the song, we're going to sing it together. Looking for a city where we'll never die. There the sainted millions never say goodbye. There we'll meet our Savior and our loved ones too. Pray, come Holy Spirit, all our hopes renew. Sure, the older ones will know that one. Amen? Amen. We will continue with the program. And at this time, and it will follow in this order, we'll have a tribute from the Tower Hill relatives, Miss Jereen Cousin, followed by Dotty Bernard Aunt. We'll then have from Bishop Robinson, followed by Mel Rita Leslie. And it will follow in that order. Platform. 
pastors, leaders, officers, and members. Of, again, let me say it. I have to. Brethren, I feel so blessed. I feel so good stepping into this house of God. What a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Reverend ministers, bishop, pastors, leaders, officers, choir leaders, members. We give God thanks for you all here this morning. We are alive, maybe not well, but we are alive in the house to send home our loved ones, our blood family, to wherever, but in the name of Jesus, he knows and Jesus knows where he's at at this time. So we just give God thanks. We just give God thanks and praise today here. <clears throat> I've gone to a home prepared where the saints abide. Just over in the glory land. Yes, I am gone to be by the Savior's side. Just over.
fret over him. We talk about him every time, every day. And when I heard that he was going to Kingston to do another surgery, we say, Lord Jesus. Why, Lord? Then the next turn I hear that he died. I said, yes, he's ready to meet with his Lord. And the cousin is gone. Well, we thank God for your journey. None of us who will be next, but everything leave in the hands of the Almighty God. Hallelujah, brethren. Family, cheer up. Church family, cheer up. Blessings. And let me tell you, me love your church bad. <laughs> me love the church bad as you reach the door, you can feel the presence of the Lord in the house. Hallelujah. And we couldn't go on my toil back and I said not a word. Reverend Robin said, we don't know you, we don't know you have me TV. But me hear your name call. But every time and every day me watch you, man. Blessing, my son. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Is good morning, everyone. So I'll be reading on behalf of Auntie Dati. Tribute to Terry from Auntie Dati. Your memory is my keepsake with which I'll never part. God has you in his keeping, I have you in my heart. A nephew is usually the closest relative to a son. Terry was like unlike anybody else. If I had to define him in one word, it would be God-fearing. When we met, the first thing he mentioned was God. July of 2019, during our family reunion, we developed a bond and we have been closer than ever since. During the pandemic, we talked almost every single day. He was devoted to God and his family. He adored them all, especially his sister, Colleen. When the phone pings at any hour of the night, I know it's Terry sending a Bible verse or something about the word. <laughs> He always messaged Bible verses throughout the day, and simply reading them would warm my heart. His last quote sent on November 6, 2023 said, God is watching over you. I know because I asked him to. His health began to deteriorate, but his trust in God remained strong. Despite his illness, he was a Job on earth and he never complained about his condition. He was continuously giving thanks and serving God. His life was a testament to Job 19. No matter how he was tested and tried, he still kept the faith. The following verses from Job 19, verse 25 to 27 states, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms, after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom 
I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. On his birthday, I spoke with him, and he spoke eloquently about his sister as usual. The next call from him was in the hospital, and I spoke with him and checked to see whether everything was all right. But then we got the dreadful news of his passing, which left me shook because just a few days ago, we had our last conversation. But as you close your eyes in rest, may all your pain and troubles be lost. May you find paradise and a world of eternal life. May your soul rest in peace. Yes, Bishop Papu. Praise the Lord. Greetings to our moderator, to our pastor and district overseer, Reverend Lewis, to the ministers on the platform, and to the, all the well-wishers and those who have gathered to offer condolences. I join with you and offer sincerest condolences to the family of bereaved. You know, and we go way back, and I say this with all sincerity, from the bottom of my heart, uh, for myself and my wife and family, I offer you the deepest condolences and the warmest ones as well. We go way back, way back in time. If we're not careful, it seems as if it's another generation or two that we go back. I am a member of the Salt Spring New Testament Church that has not changed. That makes me a member of the Glendevon District of Churches. And so a loss for the Glendevon family, I feel is a loss for the Salt Spring family. And the connections here run deep to a time when vacation Bible school was a thing. And it was, it was competitive. It was always super competitive. And, and Bishop Shane and, and Francis and, and Lydia, that is down there, they, they, they know. They, Lydia is still looking young, but she goes way back as well. <laughs> to the time when VBS was led by, by the Bowen sisters. Yes, Auntie Diane is still around. She looks young too, but she a big woman. You know, she, yeah, yeah, very big, very big. Reverend McClarkin sitting in the front here. Not, 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 not Reverend Dion now, but Carlene would have been, I, I believe, the first from this district to make a move to Bethel Bible College. And, and guess who was second on this district? Yours truly. Yeah, Sister Carlene, the others, them come after we, you know, long after we, you know, we've been, we've been in this thing for a long time. My gray hair shows it. Yes? So we go way back to a time when the singing was one of the biggest competitions. Salt Spring would always win. And the Glendavon would be vexed, upset, but it is what it is. We, we, we couldn't change that. But one thing that always come back to my mind is Brother Terry. I, I'm not sure when he became Devon. I, I just knew him as Brother Terry. But I realized that changes took place somewhere along the line. Uh, Dean became Dion. You know, Sion became Philip. I, I don't know. Carlene, well, Carlene was always Carlene. But some changes went on with the names. I, I, I didn't even know that Terry was Devon until I saw the, his obituary. I'm like, oh yeah, he, he, he was, I guess he was Devon from birth. Well, we just knew him as Brother Terry. Uh, Brother Terry was, was faithful. Uh, Brother Terry was always here. And, and anywhere the activities are taking place on the district or in the region, if there's one person that would be there, is Brother Terry. He loved this music. 
and I knew him from the time when he would catch the key for the song when the song ended. <laughs> You're singing the song and he's over there that the music used to be about that side. And he was there, pong, 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 until he got it, pong. But the song finished. <laughs> but I knew him from that time and then he got better over the years to the point where he became more of a professional musician. And then a technician and, and working with sounds, music and sounds and so on. You know, the memories of him from those days remains fresh in my mind. The last time I saw Brother Terry, he didn't look like the Brother Terry that I grew up with. He had lost weight. He had lost a leg. He had his crutches. If he didn't call me by name, you know, anywhere I go and anybody say Chris, whether brother Chris or Chris, uh, I, I knew, I know it must be somebody from, from Salt Spring or Glendevon. And when he said it, I recognized the voice and then I looked in his eyes and I said, Terry, and we hugged. And you know, it, it, was, it was like a rush of memories. We reminisced for a little bit, only for a little bit. That was the last time I saw him. And I'm really, really uh, sad or saddened that he's no more with us. But I know he's in a better place and a better space today. And I want, because Paul encourages us to encourage one another with spiritual psalms and hymns and the word or from the word of God. We do not mourn like those who do not have any hope. But we mourn recognizing that our brother served God. He served the church. He was a loyal member, a faithful servant of the Lord and remember him that way as we look forward to seeing him again on the other side. There's a little old song. It's a very old one that we sing quite often without recognizing that it has verses. I, I do hope that you'll permit me just to probably raise the first verse, or maybe the, the chorus first, so everybody knows where I'm going, and then just to do one of the verses. Because I think that it, it, it really points to who we are, but more so where we're going, and where we hope to see our brother again. It says, by and by, when the morning come, when all the saints of God shall gather home, we will tell the story of how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story. Driven on the restless seas of time, somber skies and howling tempests of succeed the bright sunshine in the land of perfect day. When the mist have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. When all the saints of God are gathered, oh, we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Let me do one more. We are often destitute of the things that life demands. Want of found and want of shelter, thirsty hills and barren lands. But we're trusting in the Lord and according to his word, we will understand it better, better by and by. by. Better. 
sir, by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome. By and by, we will understand it all by and by. Melrita Leslie. Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. God gives life and he But when I view the last sunset that flows o'er the sea, I know that sunrise will be waiting for me. Oh, yeah. 
and that homecoming day. What a day that will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I just have to pause here. And you know, sometimes you go to some funeral because I'm following on that tribute from Auntie Dottie. And when the young lady, everything. You ever go to some funeral and you wonder if you're at the right funeral? Yeah. Because the way they put it together for the person. And during lifetime, you don't know that the person has that the person. So you have to wonder, am I at the right funeral? And maybe if you didn't see the body on your way in, maybe you'd have lived. You'd have left. Well, when I listened, everything in that tribute was Brother Terry. Yeah. I sat there and I listened. And that verse, he always sends a verse. Always sends a verse. And as I said, when I saw that he had passed, I refused because I had to go back and look. And I said, I'm sure he sent me a verse this morning. I had to go back. Is, you know, when you live in that denial phase, and I had to make two phone calls because I had to be sure. And that's how we must live our lives. That's how we are to live. Let our lives speak for us. And you know, I had to laugh when I heard Reverend Robinson was saying that he didn't know him as um, Devon. It's the last name. When I was looking in the papers, I knew the face. I said, I know, because it was a younger picture. And then I looked at the name, because I didn't know him as any Devon. And all we knew him, all I know him, and quite a few of us at the flank of New Testament, Brother Terry and Terry. So I had to look again. I had to smile when he mentioned that. And I know him only seven years, and he knew him basically a lifetime. And he didn't know where did I, they find this name. But as we continue with the program, we will be having the second lesson from Hannah, um, daughter, um, Brother Terry's daughter. It will be taken from John 14, verses 1 to 6. And this will be followed by a tr some tributes from Joyce and Green, aunt, from the renal unit at the Cornwall Regional Hospital, and to Brother Terry's driver. Good morning, everyone. The scripture reading is taken from John 14, verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, the year may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas sent unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, And the life no man cometh unto the Father but by me. We honor this by saying, Thanks be to God. Testing, testing. Yeah. Okay. I guess you all heard me say good morning like three times. <laughs> but I know the mic wasn't picking up when I started. And you know, I want to say there's not a word of a lie that has been spoken in regards to Terry. I was inserted in his family like 40 years ago. And I know Terry that long. And he never changed. What a wonderful human being. <laughs> Let me just get on. I didn't know him as Devon either. 
and 40 years, and all I knew him as Terry. And here is what I sat and wrote. Our tribute to a great man who we call Terry. Life is a gift every one of us has a limited number of days on this earth. No one knows the day or the hour. How will we utilize our time? So you or others can look back and say, like Paul say, Terry has fought a good fight. He has finished the course. He has kept the faith. I will say for Devon, who we call Terry, he's like Paul in whatever state he found himself, he would be the one to encourage you. He was always telling us about God. What a man, a man we all learn from. He wasn't rich with material things, but he was so rich in love. What the world is so lacking. December the 6th at 2.58 a.m., I laid awake and thought of how I missed his beautiful, encouraging words. We could expect his good morning in between and good night messages and quotes. He always said, Auntie, I love you. You're so kind and sweet. I would respond with, I love you more. Can I tell you, he was an inspiration to me, us. He made me want to be a better person. He had no legs, so much health issues, but he <laughs> was always the first one to encourage you, give you a kind word, and didn't complain. We all sh should learn a valuable lesson from him. Terry, you truly was a shining star. He was always grateful for just a kind word. I always in was encouraged by the way he encouraged everyone to pray and to remember the creator. He, was, he wasn't wholesome in body, but in spirit he was. He, had, he has left an imprint in our hearts. He did not hold malice or grudge. He didn't talk ill of others. He was a peacemaker. The Bible say, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall see God's face. You are so missed, but God call you. Take your rest. I could hear him saying, Auntie, don't worry, I'm all right. Please pray and take care of Uncle Patrick, whom he loved dearly. I still go back and read his messages. The day he died, the message he sent, and I'm sure to others was, God is watching over you. I know because I asked him. What a message to send when I believe he might have known or realized that he was dying. I don't think it was a coincidence. He left us with a message of hope. Names are not coincident either. Tell, although they tell me that his legal name was Terry, but it's easy to see why he was given the pet name. His legal name was Devon, but it's easy to see why he was given the pet name Terry. Terry stands for undeceptive, unassuming, and that sounds very much like Terry. It said Terry likes to control everyone within his influence to shape things to his own liking. F positive, he develops it with his spirit. It sounds just like him. God's protection. You're sensitive, affectionate, imaginative, cooperative, spiritually aware, and prone to self-sacrifice. He sure was. T is for Terry. Treasure throughout and throughout. E is for the effusum in everything you did. R is for rewarding us with your richest blessing every day. R is for radiance, and that's just how you was. I is for the ideal one that God loaned to us for a while. 
Rest in eternal peace, our dear, sweet, beautiful, loving, kind Terry. From your loving and kind, Uncle Patrick, Osborne, Paul, Ricky, Chris, Aunt Gracie Opal, Joyce Ann, Mama Shirley, Damien, and the rest of the family. Rest, Terry. Good morning, everyone. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Me and Terry are friends. And I hear me to tell Terry. Years in mother. Me can't talk about the years when I hear them. You understand me? And me tell you soon. Terry went sick. He got a round hill. He meet me call. We pick him up around the hill. I answer for Henry when there. Ask that Henry when there. Me, that country can pick him up. Me pick him up. And watch you now. Last Wednesday, in car, me pick him up hospital, right? See, and men left him there. Me name came in the morning. And see, and left him there. And when me look now, When they called me, I said, come see him, right? And when we, go, when we go see him, he said to me, say, he said to me, say, fat man, you know what I say? I got that it's a morning, that's a Thursday. All right, I know it's at 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, I left. 6 o'clock, now he called me. And when we look now, I said, no, man, I call him. He said, no, ready. He said, no, call me. He said, no, call me. He call him back. He said, no, ready. He said, no, call me. He call him back. He said, no, ready. And you know, sir, I don't hear nothing from Terry. From that, the Monday, I come out. And I no call Terry. I get a message from my wife, call me. And say, Cox, somebody left me to see you. So Terry dead. <laughs> me miss him bad, trust me. Yeah, I'm a good friend. I um, can't say, God bless him. I have no sing a song, I'm not that long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Listen now. You hear me now? Me not a singer, but we'll sing the song, right? Good. Into my heart, I'm crossing there again to deal with you. <laughs> it's my heart desire. It's my heart desire. All I can do. Fall on my knee and cry. All I can do, fall on my knee and cry. Set my, set me with fire and purify my heart. Purify my heart. Take me close, close and never before, close and never be. Take me close, close and never before, <laughs> close and never be. Sorry, man. Sure. All right, good. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah. No, no, no. All right. Take me to the place, Lord, to the secret place where I can be with you. You can make me like you. Take me to the place, Lord, to the secret place where 
I can be with you. You can make me like you. Wrap me in your arm. 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 Wrap me in your arm with love. Thank you. Terry, I miss you. I meet you here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings to our ministers and on the platform. I stand here this morning with mixed emotions because Devon, he was a very humble and quiet person. You know, we at the dialysis unit, we are filled with a lot of singers. And most times when we are singing, he would say, nurse, you know what I'm a musician? Yeah, man, we're a musician, man, we're a musician. And then, you know, over the last couple of months, you know, me being affiliated with Salt Spring and identifying ourselves as being members of the New Testament Church of God body, our relationship grew stronger. And, you know, he will be missed. And, you know, we have one of Devon's close friends. I didn't know him as Terry. <laughs> I knew him as Devon. But we have one of Devon's close friends right here, you know, who would like to say a few words before I do this song. Pleasant. Good morning, Evan. Someone I met six months at the renal unit. He was a humble, generous person to each and everyone there. He's so sadly missed by everyone, and everyone asked me to send out condolences to the family, friends, and everyone. It's only sorry. The funeral has to fall on a Thursday, okay? So, God bless you all, and God keep you all, okay? All right, so, as a staff, I get to see the side, or we the staff get to see the side of some of our patients that you at home don't get to see. And based on the side of Devon that I knew, this is the song that came to my heart. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. No sense. Spoken for time on me to anymore. I'm longing for you. Days to late. 
Brother Terry is no longer in pain. The renal unit was where it was like his visit. He was in pain. Sometimes he came to church, but the dedication that he had, he would come. And sometime around that keyboard, you could see that he was in pain. But that's his passion for the Lord. That's what he loved. He's no longer in pain, family. Cry if you want to cry. Cry if you want to cry. I heard coming out of it humility. And I tell you, when I go to funerals, I want the truth. I want the truth. Don't polish up anything, come to me. And Brother Terry, that I knew, that's him. That is him. A humble man. A humble man. And you know, he often speaks so proudly about his daughter, Hannah. He speaks so highly of his daughter, Hannah. And every time I think, and I, my man goes on Hannah, I just feel this sadness that comes over me. But Hannah, God has you. And he has you in the cover of his arms. He's going to keep you protected. He's going to keep you protected. Family, cry if you want to cry. Whatever you want to do, you do it. Because God understands your tears. Tears is a language he understands. As we move on in the program, I'm going to ask, next in line, Reverend Shane Gillett and Trevor Palmer, a family friend, to come. I also have his name slip me, one of his former employees. I think it's Mr. Pete again? Spirit. Yes, and we will come in that order. So it will be Reverend Shane Gillett, 
Trevor Palmer, and Mr. Peart. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, before I begin, I was asked by Bishop Winston Park and Sister D. Park to offer their condolences and their prayers to the family. Reverend and Sister Park are unavoidably absent. As you know, Reverend Park is not doing well physically. But they are actually online watching, and so um, they have asked me to express their condolences to the family and to let you know that their prayers are with you at this time. There's quite a lot I could say about my brother. And I say my brother without reservation because Terry was not just a friend and if anybody knows me and knows the McLaughlin family you know why I say that because we grow together and Terry has always been around my mind goes back to quite a few things as Bishop Robinson says there are a few things I can say that I'm sure many will be able to attest to. Terry was a lover of people. He loved people and he loved his family. It'd be very hard for you to not get along with Terry. And even if Terry knows that you are not happy with him, Terry would make sure that he laugh at you until you have no other choice but to be happy. He was one person that he was very fun loving. He loves people and he loved the Lord dearly. Everybody knows that. Late at night, early in the morning, Terry would be sending the messages. And for those persons who were very close to Terry, he would not just send the message, but he will follow up that message with a phone call. Yes. I remember one night, Terry called me about after one to two. I wasn't sleeping, but when I saw the first call and it stopped, I said, I must mistake. <laughs> but then the phone rang again. And I said, I'm not answer Terry, you know, because you answer Terry now. Daylight might catch you upon this phone. And then what I realized, Terry sent a voice note that Terry said, Pastor, I know you're not asleep. Answer the phone. <laughs> 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 Terry said, Pastor, I know you're not asleep. Answer the phone. You know, that was Terry. He loved the Lord. Terry loved his food. Terry loved his food. He loved cook. And he loved to eat. I remember one time Terry was in the hospital. And Terry called me one day and said, Pastor, care something to eat, come give me now. And I said, what do you want? Terry said, buy a number one at Burger King. <laughs> and then he called me back and he said, and number one is the one with the bacon. I said, I don't know. He said, all right. Anyone want to have the bacon, buy that. I said, Terry, you're supposed to eat them or something, yeah? Terry said, you're going dead. Any, how you know? <laughs> buy the burger cake. <laughs> <laughs> Terry said, the doctor said that he can have a little bit. That was his little bit for the moment. This time of the year, family and friends, I always look forward to sharing with Terry because Terry would always call at Christmas time and say, Pastor, if you look about ham, make sure you leave a little piece of the ham. 
and I was reminiscing and I said, boy, I forgot to just eat terry piece of the ham this year. Because there's no terry to leave it for. <laughs> I see I see Brother Dean waving his hand. You're telling me hi. <laughs> Just that, brothers and sisters, Terry loves his music. Terry was an engineer. I remember days when we were growing up in this church, as Bishop says, the music was always over there. And it doesn't matter the instrument. Terry played bass, Terry played lead guitar, Terry played drum, Terry played keyboard. Listen, Terry knew how to manage the system Late at night, early morning, wherever, whatever, the crusades, the street meeting, Terry was always there. He's one person that every pastor that comes to this church could count on. Because if no one is at church at night, pastor know that he's going to have music because Terry coming to church. There were nights in that music room around the back there that they had to give Terry his office. <laughs> that his mother <laughs> didn't laugh. Yeah, man, that's Terry's office, the music room. Terry's sanctum. And there you go in there without Terry's permission. He knew where everything was and he knew just how to find everything. And brothers and sisters, Never forget one time as I close, we were working in VBS, and Terry and I were responsible for downstairs. And Terry called me one evening and he said, tomorrow morning we're going downtown to shop for VBS, and we're leaving at this time. And I don't remember what happened in the morning. But I remember when I was coming through the little track up there that I used to walk to come. By the time I exit the track, it was Terry going into the taxi. And he said, take a taxi. <laughs> Meet me a gully. <laughs> <laughs> and when I took the taxi and I reached downtown and I said, what? Well, you know how Terry is when he's reprimanding or he's talking hard. Him yeah. stammer. Him talk fast, and you have to say, slow down, hold on, say it again, say it again, because you'd miss something. And Terry said, listen, man, know the lunch of already and time and this and that, and but Terry was faithful. He was faithful to the end, and even when he was on the crutches, Terry remained very faithful. <laughs> pastored in Hanover and I had some problems with my system at church. And I called Terry one day and I said, Terry, who me can ask to come sort out the system at church? Terry said, may we complete? Just pick me up. I said, but Terry, you're sick. And brethren, Terry would not give me a soul to do it. And he came, I picked him up, he came. He spent the entire day up and down. My control room is mounted at the back of the church. Up and down the step on the crutch. And up and down the step. Up on the front, down at the back. And I sat and I looked at Terry. And Terry was just committed to all of that. My family members, this is a road that we trod not very long ago. And here we are again. Carleen, Sian, Gary, Dean, and others. We comfort ourselves in knowing that Terry is resting. There's nothing that we know for a fact is that our brother was a child of God. Sold out committed to Almighty God. And so we take comfort in that assurance more than anything else that as long as we live for God where he has inherited 
that's where we are working to be. God bless you. Just before the next tribute comes, I'm just asking the driver of 3206KN, you're blocking someone, if you could kindly remove your car. That's 3206KN, thank you. And we'll continue with the tributes. Trevor Palmer, family friend, if he's not here, we'll just take Mr. Perry. Yes, thank you. Mo morning to everybody. Good morning. Um, most of the family will only hear my name, Peart, but I am the one who teach Terry to do irrigation around the island. And most of what you have said, I'd have to repeat it, it is reality. He was the only staff I had that I could leave my pay bill with. It was the only staff I trust with certain things. But I teach him irrigation and I tell him, say, go on your own. Without learning this thing, you have to make mistake. So everything you say about Terry, I'd have to repeat it. He, at times, he will reprimand me. <laughs> at times, he will tell me, say, no. And at times, he run joke after me and remote me. But I don't know the family well, but I know his daughter from Shiban and everything. I always ask about her. So, one love, my sister, and respect to everybody. All right? God bless. Amen. Do you hear and do you see the nod of the heads? And that's true. And the endorsements. So you don't have to look around, it's Brother Terry. You don't have to wonder because everything that was said, that is Brother Terry. That is Brother Terry. When you talk about faithfulness and punctuality, that is Brother Terry. I had to smile when Reverend um, Shane said that. He said, take the taxi behind me because he's always on time. Always on time. Is he faithful? Yes. A lot of times he come around that keyboard, not 100%, but he prefers to come with the 60% and back up with the 40%. And in some time he go out the back door, our back door, and then we get a little fresh air, and he revive again, and he come again. And that's Brother Terry. We are having something in the evenings. Me now go home, you know, him stay back. He stays back. He is alone at the church, but he will stay back. He will stay back. The next item will be from his niece, Zaria McLaughlin, and it will be followed by an item from Donnet Wright Cousin. Good morning, everyone. When you're weary, feeling small, when tears are in your eyes, I will dry them all. I'm on your side when times get rough and friends just can't be found like a bridge over troubled water. 
harder I will let me down Like a breeze over troubled water Morning to you all. I know your life on earth was troubled, and only you could know your pain. You weren't afraid to face the devil you were no stranger to the rain i know your life on hurt was troubled and only you could know your pain you weren't afraid to face the devil you were no stranger to the rain so go rest I on the mountain sun your work on earth is done so go to heaven 
shouting love for the Father and the Son. Oh, how we cried the day you left us. We gathered round your grave to grieve. Wish I could see the angels' faces when they hear your sweet voice singing. So go rest I on the mountain, sun your work on earth is done. So go to heaven shouting love for the Father and the Son. So go rest I on the mountain sun your work on earth is done. So go to heaven shouting love for the Father and the Son. So go rest I on the mountain sun your work on earth is done. So go to heaven shouting love for the Father and the Son. So go to heaven shouting love for the Father and the Son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know that Terry's life here on earth was rough. Because pain is rough. Some of us feel a little pain for one day and it's like we are going to pass it. Oh no. We are going to die now. And he had endured for a very long time. But he's in heaven with his father. Nestled in the arms of the Lord. An Azarian sang. Like a bridge over troubled waters. Family members, after all of this this evening, maybe a week or two you will get some phone calls. And then everything fades away. But just remember that God has you. He has you. He will continue to keep you covered in his arms. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we're just going to pause for a few seconds. But I'm going to apologize for a technical difficulty we are experiencing. You'll be listening to a music, a musical tribute that goes along with a slideshow. But we are having difficulties with that. It was something from the Flanker New Testament Church of God. So right after I finish speaking, you will listen to the musical interlude that would have accompanied the slide presentation. However, go on YouTube when you get home or sometime convenient for you. It's on now. Understand it's now on. So we will just pause here and we will watch and we will listen. And shortly following that, um, we will hear from the Flanker New Testament Church of God Choir. been held in 
your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. What a celebration for the life of our brother, Terry. Sleep on my brother.
No more daily WhatsApp messages. They were so inspiring and meaningful. I may sound a bit shaky, but bear with me. Those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day, unseen, unheard, but always near. Still loved, still missed, and very dear. Brother Terry, as he was affectionately called by young and old at the Flanker New Testament Church, came to be known to most of us when his brother, Pastor Dean McLaughlin and family, joined our congregation in 2017. Shortly after his arrival, Pastor Dion saw the need for a musician at the church and introduced Brother Terry to us. He was a blessing to us as his passion was music. And I can almost see him still sitting at the keyboard, ready to get the next song ready for us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord or him tuning the microphones for us to have proper audio. Brother Terry was a committed, ardent, and dedicated worker for the Lord. He was always punctual for church, almost all Sunday mornings as far as he lived from church. He would be the first to reach waiting on someone to allow him to get inside the building and he never complained about it. He would be ready at all our functions as long as he was able to. Over the years that the Lord blessed us with Brother Terry, a few observations were made of him. One, Humility was his daily demeanor. What a humble soul he was. Two, he was never a grumbler. Some of us grumble about this, we grumble about that. But bear in mind that Brother Terry, he was not 100%. But he never grumbled about his given task. He never... Or may I put it, mumbler, right? Despite his illness, I have never heard him complain or said, why me? Never. Three, steadfast. He was steadfast in making the impossible possible. No matter what the challenges were, he would always try his best in his music where his heart was. Four, encourager, despite his prolonged illness, Brother Terry always seek to encourage us. And this is done by, or was done, by his various biblical quotes that he would send us during the days to encourage our spirit. And that may be the reason why some of us did not understand when we heard he had passed as maybe about 30 minutes before we received a text from him. I am a testimony to that. And, and I thought it was so personal, is when I heard that he died from Sister Brown. I said, what? Brother Terry was truly loved by the church and an asset to us. As his death is a great loss to us, he will always live in our hearts. Revelation 14 verse 13 says, Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. Brother Terry is resting now in heaven and as pastor dion said when he sent the message to inform us 
that our dear Terry had passed, he quoted. Terry is out of the hospital and now is rehearsing with Heaven's Praise Band. We believe that he is. Brother Terry, sleep on. May God's perpetual shine on you. Keep on playing your music. May you jolly dance to it dearly. Amen. Amen. Just a quick announcement. A black ISIS 5808. You're blocking someone that needs to go urgently. So we're just kindly asking if you could move for us, please. Thank you. And just before the choir comes, I'd like to acknowledge, I don't see him, he has left our present, presence, Bishop O'Neill Brown. He was here, I'm sure he may be outside. And each time I come to the platform, I'm to acknowledge our pastor, Reverend Jerome Francis, and each time I keep forgetting, welcome Reverend Francis, he'll be bringing the word shortly, and also, Bishop Keith Williams, I'd love to acknowledge you. God bless you. At this time, we will hear from the Flanker New Testament Choir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll say of the Lord that He is my refuge. In Him will I put all of my trust. He's taking me.
Hallelujah. What a song. That seems to be Terry's anthem when you speak to him. Despite the, I continue to trust in God. Despite his pain, he would tell you that he's putting his trust, not in man, but in God. And that's where our trust needs to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have reached the point in our service where we will have the word. And the word will be coming from no other than our host pastor, Reverend Jerome Francis. We call him Bishop, we call him Reverend. Reverend Bishop Jerome Francis. Audience, please welcome him. <laughs> Shall we praise the Lord, everyone? Amen. Shall we lift our hands and praise the Lord? Amen. If God has been good to you, lift your hands and magnify him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We are not here to, to mourn as people having no hope. Amen. If it was only in this life we had hope, we'd be men most miserable. Yes. But touch your neighbor and say, I'm not feeling miserable today. Amen. We are here rejoicing and lifting up the name of the Lord as we remember our brother, our friend, our colleague, Terry, um, who means and meant so much to us. And everybody here has been impacted by Terry's life one way or another. Amen? Amen. 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 I've listened to everything that has been said. And, uh, you know, I can endorse all of the comments made by um, Bishop Robinson and, and Reverend Gillette and to everyone else who came and, and said something about Terry. You know, it, it is a joy to have met this, this person, this brother. Uh, my history with Terry goes way back as well. So, you know, I can identify with Bishop Robinson when he went back into the catalog, even though I was just a little lad. But I remember Terry very well. And I give God thanks for, for the dedication that Terry had, had shown to the things of God. You see, my mother told me growing up that only what you do for God will last. And so, Terry, Terry demonstrated and displayed a kind of attitude that, that many of us would love to have or should have. That when it comes on to the things of God, we do it without murmur or complaining. Even in sickness, Terry remained true to, to, to God and the things of God. And so, you know, when I was appointed to the Flankers Church, and even before the appointment, I got a call. I saw a number calling me on WhatsApp, and I was looking, which number is this? Wasn't sure who it was, and when I answered, um, it was Brother Terry. I uh, called and said, here is you coming, you know. Here is you coming, and, and he was happy, and you know, I never felt like I was talking to a stranger, because I knew Terry from a very long time, and so, even when I got to Flanker, he was there. And for every service, he was there. And even for night service, when he found it possible, he was there. And so I watched his commitment and dedication. And, you know, I looked at Terry and I said, boy, even um, on broken pieces, this man is still coming. Still coming. And, and I never heard Terry complain in one bit. And, and even to the point where I visited him at the, when he went to the hospital, you know, he was always, he was still trying to encourage me. Um, even though he was, was, was in the position he was in, he still had encouraging words. And, and to everyone who spoke about the text messages and, and phone calls, yeah, I, I was a recipient of it as well. Sometimes when I get up in the morning, 
as early as 5.30, 6 o'clock, I see a message on my phone. It is a Bible verse from Brother, brother Terry. And, and one, when I, the last time I saw him at the hospital, he said to me, Pastor, I'm not worried about this, you know. I, it's in God's hand. I'm not worrying. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just living and going on. And whatever God sees to do, Terry was open to whatever God wanted to do in his life. And so I, I, I salute him. And I pray that, that I, even myself, that I will take even whatever lessons I can take from his life and his attitude in making me a better Christian. Amen? Amen. Amen. From the book of John, St. John chapter 11, a few verses from verse 18 coming down. It's a familiar scripture, passage of scripture to us. Yes. And so I want you to listen as I read. It says, Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though he die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Verse 27. Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who is to come into the world. Father, bless your words unto our hearts as we give you all glory, honor, and praise. I thank you, Lord, that your strength is made perfect, even now in my times of weakness. You are already here, and so we lift you up. So I ask that you bless your words unto our hearts as we give you all glory, honor, power, and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to talk to us this afternoon and to let someone know that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He is the resurrection and the life. And so when we look in John's gospel, the gospel of John, which is filled with many portraits of our Lord and Savior, I've come to recognize that Everyone that God has created is a masterpiece for his glory. And so when we look in this chapter, we see the greatest of all miracles of Jesus on display. And so in the events surrounding the resurrection of Lazarus from the dead, we can see the power of our Lord Jesus Christ at work. If all of the other miracles in scripture, brothers and sisters, were omitted, were never mentioned, this one miracle that is outlined in the Gospel of John would have been enough to demonstrate to us that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And so in acknowledging and noticing that, Brothers and sisters, I want us to take a glimpse into the reality and to the fact that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Brothers and sisters, I want us to know that Jesus is worthy of our praise. I want us to know that Jesus is worthy of our faith. The choir just sang the song that some trust in, in chariots, some trust in horses, 
but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Jesus is worthy, brothers and sisters, of our adoration. He, and in spite of what we go through, he is still God. In spite of how we feel, he is still God. In spite of what we are faced with on our day-to-day -day experiences, he is still God. And so Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that if it was only in this life we had hope we would have been men most miserable but today we don't have to feel as men most miserable because we recognize that we serve a God who is the undisputed champion he has never lost a battle death cannot hold him captive even in the grave he is Lord somebody lift your hands and give him praise Somebody lift your hands and give him praise. Brothers and sisters, when I read this text, I've come to recognize that there was a problem that was surrounding Mary and Martha at the time and a problem that surrounds us as people in this time, in this 21st century. And that problem is death. Uh, death is a, was a problem then and death is still a problem now and mankind is worried or concerned when it comes on to death. Can I say something to us that Lazarus brothers and sisters was dead and grief had now invaded Lazarus's home. That is what death does. It doesn't matter how happy you are at this moment. It doesn't matter what state you are at this moment. When death comes, it brings a kind of sadness. It brings a kind of devastation. And so I want us to understand something about death. That death is an ugly event. That death, brothers and sisters, as I said, when it invades our space, it brings all kind of delusionment and it brings all kind of discouragement. Uh, when someone dies, it is not a happy moment. It doesn't matter how evil or how wicked we think this person was or is. When death comes, it is not a wonderful thing. But not only is death an ugly event uh, but we've come to recognize from scripture that death is a universal event uh, it is appointed unto man to die that death is a reality amongst us brothers and sisters can i say to us uh, that one day we will die that one day brothers and sisters whether we like it or not whether we are ready or not uh, whether we are prepared or whether we believe in it or not uh, Death is a surety. We will die, brothers and sisters. You can bet on that. Death is very certain. And death does not care about what time of the year it is. It doesn't care about the money in your pocket. It doesn't care about the vehicle that you drive. Death, most time when it comes, it doesn't come with an announcement. But it comes, brothers and sisters. Not only is death a you universal event but death is also an unexpected event uh, brothers and sisters Mary and Martha thought that their brother Lazarus was just going to be sick and after being sick he would have recovered and he would have been up going about his merry way but in the midst of sickness brothers and sisters death had another plan death had an intention uh, for Lazarus uh, in that condition but while they thought that Lazarus sickness uh, was unto death uh, or for his demise uh, it was God who was setting up uh, this situation because God was getting ready to 
will receive some glory out of this situation. Whatever it is that God brings to, to, the, to our forefront, whatever it is that God allows us as the people of God to go through, it is not for our demise. It is not for our destruction. Whatever God brings us to, it's because he is getting ready or he wants us or he wants to get the glory out of it. Uh, brothers and sisters, Brother Terry uh, is in a place where he is no longer feeling pain and death is just the vehicle that transported Brother Terry into the arms of Almighty God. If you don't believe it, you can read in Luke chapter 12 where the Bible talks about a rich man and a poor man that the rich man lived his life and he enjoyed his life and he thought he would have lived continually. Uh, there was also the poor man who never had much. He never had all the wonderful things in this world. Uh, and when I think of this poor man, I've, I remember Brother Terry that sickness would rock his body and you could have seen it on the exterior that our brother was not doing well. I've come to recognize that, that our bodies will go through transformation because Paul says the outer man will perish and it perishes day by day. Sickness will rot this body. All kind of pain will come to us as the people of God. But while sickness is touching us on the outside, Paul says something is happening greater on the inside. And so while while our brother Terry faced the pressures and sickness on the outside, death came as the portal that took him to the place of rest. And like the rich man that died, the Bible said he found himself in a place of torment. But the, but the poor man, this poor man who died, he found himself in a place of rest. Can I say to us, the people of God, that though who die in Christ there is a place of rest that is awaiting God's people and so we know brother Terry is absent from the body but he's present with almighty God so we don't have to come here today even though we miss our brother we miss him coming to church we miss his dedication we miss his music we will miss his text messages but today I believe our brother has found rest and he has said goodbye to heartache. He has said goodbye to pain. He has said goodbye to visiting Cornwall Regional Hospital. Our brother is in a place of rest, people of God. We can lift our hands and give God praise for our brother's life that he has lived. Yes. Death is a reality and it is a problem that we are faced with. You know, I spoke to a police officer, a friend of mine last week, last evening. And while we were there standing in KFC and we were talking about what was happening in, in this world, in Montego Bay. And I shared with him, boy, that, that it, I was surprised the other morning when I was going to the dry cleaners to, to drop off two suits to get it clean and only to be greeted by, by, by a dead man right there at the, at the dry cleaner. And I was saying, my God, not, not, not that, you know, I'm sure that brother, when he got up, he didn't plan on dying. When we hear of the accident of the two nine-year-olds that were killed in South Spring, they didn't plan to die. When, when the accident happened in, in Lilliput just a day or two days ago and two persons died, they didn't plan to die, brothers and sisters. But the reality is uh, death is around us one way or another. But the officer said to me that some of these people uh, sometimes who are going around killing and, and doing all kind of things uh, when their time comes to die uh, nobody wants to die they don't embrace it uh, and can I dare even say to us there are even many people in the church uh, will sing the song we want to go to heaven and rest but how many are willing to embrace death uh, as the portal uh, as the means of 
of getting to that place of rest. It is something that nobody wants to deal with. We live on this earth and act as if we are going to be here forever. And so the writer in Psalm 90 talks about teaching us how to number our days so we can be careful. We are given three scores and ten. And it is, and if you know much very well, we know how, how many years that is. And by reason of strength, you, you, you live longer. So I say to people, when you touch 40, you, you know you are at the end of one generation. And you are looking to go into the end of another generation, which is just about the final chapter of our lives. It means that we are getting closer to this appointment called death. For those who are outside of Christ, death becomes a terror. Death becomes a sting to us that we don't want to embrace. But when I spoke to Brother Terry for every moment and situation that I, and every occasion I got rather in talking to Brother Terry, Brother Terry wasn't worried. I never got the impression that this man was afraid. I never got the impression that this man was sitting and stressing himself. He said, Pastor, it is in the hand of Almighty God. In other words, whatever God wants to do, let him do it. That even though people might miss me in this physical realm, I'm going to be in a place, brothers and sisters, where I don't have to worry about the pain and the heartache that I am going through. I don't have to worry about being rushed to go on oxygen. Uh, Terry is in a place where he needs no machine. He's in a place where he needs no nurse, no doctor to come and examine him. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, the song man says it will soon be done it with troubles and trials. When I get home on the other side, uh, I'm going to shake my hand with the elders. I'm going to tell the people good morning and I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus brother Terry oh God Almighty is in a better place than all of us but when I look in the text Jesus spoke about the antidote to this problem that the people were worried about and what we are worried about. And if you read verse 25 of the text, Jesus gives them the answer. Uh, when, the, when Mary and Martha says, yes, when Martha said, our brother will rise again in the last resurrection, in the last day, in the resurrection, Jesus looked at her and said, I am the resurrection. I'm giving you the antidote. I am the resurrection and the life. I am God all by myself. I control the powers. Uh, and this, brothers and sisters, I want us to know that God is saying, I am the resurrection. I am the life. I possess that power. And because of that possession, it should activate a kind of faith in our lives. Why? Because Jesus has a track record, uh, brothers and sisters, of raising things from the dead. Because uh, if you read in earlier Gospels, uh, he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. Uh, the widow of Nain's son was raised uh, from the dead. Uh, and if that was not enough, uh, read Paul's writing in 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, Jesus' followers uh, will be raised uh, from the dead. Uh, and if that is not enough, uh, Jesus Jesus himself rose from the dead. He went into the grave and the Bible said on the third day he rose triumphantly from the grave. Touch your neighbor and say neighbor it is no secret what God can do. I don't care what is dead in it. Can I put a little preach in it now? I don't care what is dead in your life. When Jesus comes on the scene that 
which is dead uh, must come to life. Uh, I don't care how many people write you off. Uh, I don't care the negative words being said about you. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, oh God bless. Uh, no man can curse. Uh, and if God be for you, uh, who can be against you? Uh, can I say to the church this morning uh, that we have a confidence uh, that our God is who he says uh, he will be. Uh, he is the resurrection. Uh, he is the life. Uh, I don't care how it looks. Uh, I can't preach to Brother Terry, uh, but I can preach to us uh, that we must put our confidence uh, and hope in God. Uh, we put confidence and hope uh, in the world system. Uh, and the world system fail. Uh, but the songman says, my hope uh, is built on nothing less. Somebody lift your hands and praise God. Uh, not going to keep you all morning, uh, but Jesus, uh, the people spoke about the problem, uh, and Jesus told them uh, what the power or what the answer is uh, for that problem. Uh, but also, uh, Jesus is, the, is allowing us to know uh, that even though He is the resurrection and life, notice what the text says. Uh, he says, Those who believe in me are those who die and believe in me uh, shall live again uh, and that's a promise uh, tell your neighbor you have a promise uh, tell your touch your neighbor and say neighbor uh, you have a promise uh, there is a promise brothers and sisters uh, but the only way you can inherit uh, or you can accept or be a part uh, of this promise uh, is only if you accept Jesus Christ uh, as your Lord and Savior uh, brother Terry is a recipient uh, of that promise because uh, Jesus says I am going uh, to prepare a place for you uh, uh, that where I am uh, you will be also uh, in my father's house are many mansions uh, and if it were not so I would have told you uh, uh, brother Terry has inherited uh, his promise uh, but can I tell you something about this promise uh, that your work can allow you to inherit it uh, your good works can't allow you to inherit it. Doesn't matter the new year is coming and everybody is planning on making new year's resolution. New year's resolution cannot allow you to inherit this promise. Uh, can I even dare say to us that religion cannot allow you to inherit this promise. Coming to church Sunday after Sunday doesn't allow you to inherit this promise. The only way you can inherit uh, this promise uh, is if you know Jesus Christ uh, as your Lord uh, and Savior. Uh, so the songman asks the question, have you been to Jesus uh, for the cleansing blood? Uh, are you washed? Uh, can I talk to us uh, that if you're going to inherit this promise, uh, you better be born again. Uh, you have to be born uh, of the water, the spirit, uh, and the blood. Uh, come on, touch the ox and neighbor neighbor. Uh, have you been born again? Uh, I know you're singing on the choir, uh, but have you been born again? Uh, I know you're here looking well, uh, but ask a neighbor, uh, have you been born again? Uh, you can only be born again uh, when you accept Jesus uh, as Lord and Savior. Uh, can I dare say to us uh, that salvation uh, is the only thing I recognize mankind uh, take advantage this advant or advantage of uh, or we take for granted uh, salvation uh, is the only decision uh, that people run the risk uh, of accepting uh, we don't run the risk uh, of certain things uh, uh, we don't run the risk of paying our taxes uh, because we don't want to be in problem with the government uh, we don't run the risk uh, when, our, when we are driving our cars uh, and the sign comes up on the dashboard uh, we don't run the risk uh, of not paying attention to that sign. Uh, but mankind uh, is running a risk. Uh, living in a world now uh, where the hearts of men uh, have become so desperately wicked. Uh, how can I talk to us? Uh, mankind is running the risk uh, of coming into the presence of God. Uh, and when God has given you the opportunity uh, to accept 
accept him. Mankind takes the risk of going out of God's presence and not saying yes to God. Mankind takes the risk of getting up every morning. When I saw the man dead on the road, the first question that came to my mind, was he prepared? Was he ready? I cannot talk to somebody in here. What ask your neighbor, are you ready? When I hear all of the testing, uh, all of the, the, the incidents uh, of people dying, uh, the question is, are you ready? Uh, are, are you getting ready? Uh, but I want to say to us uh, that Brother Terry uh, was not getting ready. Uh, Brother Terry was not preparing to be ready. Uh, but Brother Terry was ready. Uh, God, even in pain, uh, Brother Terry kept on going. Uh, he reminds me of the spirit of Hannah. Uh, that even though for seven years, uh, that Penina laughed at Hannah. Uh, but Hannah kept on going uh, to the house of God. Uh, even when things weren't favorable, uh, Hannah kept on lifting up uh, the name of God. Uh, but yet when problem comes our way, uh, we use our problems uh, as an opportunity uh, to stay away from church. Uh, COVID-19 came uh, and some people took the opportunity uh, to stay away from church. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, that even in COVID, uh, even when one leg was cut off, uh, even on oxygen, uh, even on medication, uh, Brother Terry uh, did not pay attention uh, to what was going on. Uh, Brother Terry understood Paul uh, when he said my light affliction uh, is but for uh, a moment. Uh, look at your neighbor and say neighbor uh, what you're going through uh, is just for a moment. Uh, the sickness uh, is just for a moment. Uh, the pain uh, is but for a moment. Uh, the heartache uh, is but for a moment. Uh, but he said it's working out uh, a far more uh, uh, envy brother Terry uh, he's sitting uh, I can imagine him uh, around his keyboard uh, and him now ping pong uh, he's playing uh, and he's saying glory glory uh, has Brother Terry, uh, uh, he's sitting beside uh, his master. Uh, can somebody lift your hands uh, and give God praise in the house? Jesus says that's a promise. And my God is the only God I know that has a track record of keeping promise. Yeah, man. You can put your hope and confidence in pastor. Because pastor dressed nice in suit. But pastor is a lump of clay. Anything in the flesh will always bring problem. I don't care how well skillful you think you are. I don't care how much money or whatever you want to have. Anything in the flesh is problematic. Oh, God Almighty. And some man will make promise and man will fail. But whatever God has promised us, you can rest assured that no demon in hell can stop the promise. So look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, hold on, hold on. The promise will come to pass whether in life or death. Whatever God promise you uh, it must come to pass but finally from the text in verse 26 the latter part Jesus is making a plea and asking a question he said to, me, to Martha all of this what I'm saying to you yeah those who die in me yeah they will be raised again. The question he asks, do you believe? The question is still today, do you believe? You're coming to church, but ask your neighbor, do you believe? Come on, man, ask your neighbor, neighbor, you may attack. 
Hey, if Brother Terry was here, Brother Terry would be back me up on the keyboard. Yeah. And any time I'm at church and him be back me up on the keyboard, me tell him, if you wait, can maybe preach harder. I tell him, say no. Amen. But do you believe? Yeah. Jesus is making that plea, and that's the plea, brothers and sisters. Uh, if you believe, if you don't believe, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Brother Terry believe what he was living and what the Bible had said. How do I know? I, listen, I, 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 the fact that I am alive, I believe God is still giving us the opportunity to get some things right. If you straighten out, so I, I, I know, I know, gone, you couldn't gone long time. I know, dead, you couldn't dead long time. God is giving us the opportunity to get some things in right order. Whether pastor, officer, whoever you are, God is giving us the opportunity to get some things right. Because it amazes me as I close. Just the attitude of this brother alone. You know? We could not understand it. I could not understand. How can somebody be in such great of a pain and suffering. But yet still serving. No. And, 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 and examine yourself man. Examine yourself. Because we, we, we lift up excuse every time it comes on to the things of God. Yes. And, and we act like we and God are first cousin or best friends. And he understands. If Terry could have demonstrated such attitude, even in sickness, and I've always said it, and his life testifies to it, things don't have to be favorable in order to do what God wants you to do. Yeah. And Terry, can I hear me now? No, no, Terry that. And just the shell. The glory in Terry, the body couldn't contain it. So it have a morph. It, it have a change. This robe of flesh must drop. This can go to heaven. This can't contain the glory we're in you. This can't, it's like, it's like wine. It, it, when wine age, Lord God Almighty, uh, uh, if you throw aged wine into a fresh container, you notice what happened. It will burst. Because what is in it is too powerful. Uh, God Almighty, some power wrapped up in uh, some people in here. Uh, as much as you're getting older and you're going old and you're going on, uh, don't mind the pain. Uh, it might hurt, the face might twinkle and a couple white hair might come upon the face, right, Rev? Because well, me, the, well, nobody can tell me, say, oh, old me, old. Because from me young, me know me have them a white hair in my head. Praise the Lord. Amen. But there is something on the inside that this body yes, can't contain. Oh, Brother Terry body couldn't contain the power and the glory. So the Lord said, my brother, it's time to come. Come from your heartache. Come from your pain. Let it be an example. If we take a page from Terry's life, we can be prepared to meet our brother in the sweet by and by. But until that time, let's get it right. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. What a timely reminder. What a timely word. Neighbor, are you ready? Neighbor, are you getting ready? But most importantly, do you believe? What a timely word. Hallelujah. 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 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Reverend Francis, for such a timely word. At this time, we'll be hearing from the Glendevon New Testament Church of God, during which the offering will be collected. And in the interest of time, we will have these in this order. Right after the choir sings and the offering is collected, we'll have the eulogy reading by Sister Anne McLaughlin, sister-in-law of Brother Terry. We'll also have reflections from Bishop McLaughlin, Dwight, and Philip. Appreciation from Minister Carling McLaughlin in that order. Thank you. There should be a tribute coming or the choir goes. Good afternoon, everyone. Tribute on behalf of the Glendavon New Testament Church. We stand here today both with sadness and joy. Saddened by the fact that we have lost a brother, but joyous that the pain and suffering has ended and he is with Christ. Brother Devon McLaughlin, better known to all as Brother Terry, was a very dynamic member of the Glendevon New Testament Church. He began attending the church in his youth, was baptized and added to the membership. He served the church in many areas and offered support to all ministry activities. His service included music ministry, sound engineering, rehearsal of the children's choir, and he even conducted wedding rehearsals. His support was notable in the men's fellowship, youth fellowship, family life ministry, and choir ministries. During men's fellowship work days, he is remembered as always being the first to show up. We remember him attending every service unless he was hospitalized, even women's ministry if invited. He was always early for services, making sure he was on time to set up the system and have everything in place for an issue-free day. He was a dedicated and reliable worker. Terry had a very friendly, open, and inviting personality, and he did what he could to make others, especially newcomers, feel welcomed. He liked to help others, he was very kind and would help anyone who sought help in whatever way he could, even if it was the last he had. He was always very encouraging. Once he recognized the talent or interest, he would encourage you to pursue it. With the advent of WhatsApp, we could rely on him to send daily words of encouragement to anyone in his contact list. If you were prone to forgetting to pray at nights, rest assured, a message would be sent to remind you to pray before going to bed. We have lost a friend and a brother who can never be replaced. It is almost impossible not to mourn because of the indelible mark he has left on us as a church and as individuals. In some way, shape, or form, we have all encountered his goodness, his laughter, and his love. It is hard to imagine him being gone, but we are comforted by the fact that scripture tells us of a time when we will meet again. In 1 Thessalonians 4.16, we are reminded, the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So while we miss our brother dearly, 
and we would have preferred to have more time, we also look forward to that great day when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality. And we can shout with all the saints everywhere, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Brother Terry, our beloved brother in Christ, sleep in perfect peace.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for the choir again. Can I ask you to quiet your heart as we bless the offering? We want to thank you for your gift. Stand with me if you can. Thank you very much for your gift as you have given. Our Lord and our Savior, Master, we thank you, O God, that you are a provider. And your word tells us that you daily provide for your people. And so, God, this moment we want to thank you for the gifts of your children. We ask, Lord, that every gift received this afternoon will be blessed by your word. We pray, O God, as your word declares that you will rebuke the devourer for our sake. Cause your children to live under an open heaven where they will continuously receive the benefits from your hand. Bless those who will use these gifts that it will be used, Lord, to touch lives and bring glory to your name and enhance your kingdom's work here on earth. We thank you today, Father. And give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good afternoon, everyone. In the interest of time, all protocols are already observed. I greet you well in Jesus' name. The eulogy has been fragmented, and so I'll be doing the first part of it. Eulogy for the late Devon Wayne McLaughlin, a.k.a. Terry. Jeremiah 1 and verse 5. It reads, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Terry graced the world on November 3rd, 1969, to the parents of Ashton and Burbeth McLaughlin. He was the fourth of six brothers and the sixth of eight children. Terry was from a very humble beginning whose core family originated and resided in Rough Lane in the vicinity of Shorty Shop. Terry's educational journey commenced in Rough Lane at Mrs. Green School, then on to Miss Curry in Quarry, then to the Chetwood Memorial Primary School, where he was successful in his common entrance examination and further went on to the Herbert Morrison Technical High School. He was a vocationally driven person who always believed that he needed a skill. So in his exploited options to settle on a career, he learned his first trade with one of our beloved uncles, Norris McLaughlin, who is now deceased. Uncle Nori was an excellent welder and known throughout the West for his mastery in the field. So our father ensured that Terry learned from the best, his brother. Terry's stay in that field, however, was short-lived because while he was on the job at the welding plant on Dome Street, he experienced an arc flash to his eyes, and from that day, he was beyond persuasion to return to the trade. As he continued his journey, he was already a young Christian here at the Glendevon Church, where under the ministry of Reverend G.M. Davis, now deceased, he learned to play music where he specialized in the drums and the technical areas of sound engineering. 
As he developed in becoming a minister in music, the late Mr. Rankin, owner and director of the Dynamic Gospelers Band, took Terry under his wings and trained him in sound engineering and equipment management. This became his passion. He pledged that for what God had done for him, he would never offer his skills to the secular world. And as a result of that, he turned down offers to assist at places such as Reggae Sum Fest on about two occasions and other entities. He dedicated his time to the Lord here at the Glendevon Church, where he ensured the Lord received the best of what he and the church could offer as their best offering unto the Lord. The industrious person he was, he was also skilled in the field of irrigation, as you heard earlier, and rendered his service at some of our hotels, including the Sandals Resort. Terry was always seeking to find an honest source of income. He tried his hand at jerking and selling of chicken and was seen, oh, and he was also seen on one occasion, I believe so industrious he was, that he even tried pushing the hand cart. So while he was doing so on one occasion, a close family member of the friend saw him and said, boy, now you are Ashton boy. His sharp response was, no sir, a who name sir? And he went on his merry way. His life's journey brought him down the aisle where he got married to Tia. The union produced one child, Hannah. Even through his illness and up to the time of his death, Terry would do everything to ensure that his daughter received the best of what could he could afford. She is doing excellently well at the Coronaldi Primary School. His passion for Christian service was his first love outside of family. He trained his young brother, Sian, how to play the drums and was of great influence to Zachary at the Flanker New Testament Church where he was the keyboard player for approximately five years until his time of passing. As ill as he was, unless he was at the hospital, he was committed in attending and serving in the house of God. As the narrative of his life unfolds today, let us reflect on a life that, pleased, that lived to please the Lord in sickness and in health until the Lord called him home to join the band of musicians in heaven. Play on Terry, you played some excellent chords for which God is pleased. I now invite the brothers to come at this time. So long, bye-bye, so long, bye-bye, goodbye to my pain and the sorrow, so long, bye-bye, so long, bye-bye, so long, bye-bye, goodbye to the pain and the sorrow. So, so long, bye-bye, bye-bye, bye -bye. Bye -bye. greetings everyone, greetings. Uh, let me acknowledge all of the ministers and uh, family members, friends and everyone, I'm Dean, yes, don't watch the color, we are not chained like animals who wear color, right, this is a different kind of color, we are very flexible. Um, myself and uh, Philip Sion or Gary is not so well. He's having a, some pain from last night, I think. But we are here just to share a bit. The reality is, 
and I, and I want to say it, which we agreed on the outside, we will not speak much. Why? God would have it that the three ministers who spoke earlier, um, Reverend Shane, Reverend Francis, Reverend Robinson, all of us grew up in the same ghetto era we call Glendivon. And therefore, their report just root out everything out of what we were planning to talk. And so we will not be saying much. But what I can say from a, as a brother, that we, we all grew up loving each other. We have our days when we will fight, but we never draw our knives. We have our time, but we have never yet got disconnected. I want to say that growing up, I went outside earlier, Rev, and I looked at the trees and I said, boy, the trees look too nice to break a limb because I wanted to use a demonstration. How we were raised in Glendevon. Terry is a fruit of the vine. And I'm going to ask the, the family members who are here to stand, like our uncles, our aunt, Auntie Grace, stand up. Uncle Patrick, Auntie Jason, and I'm going to ask Auntie Bev McLaughlin to stand, and the Tower Hill family to stand. One of the things I can say that when it comes on to our family, we are large, and we all contribute to each other's life as we grow up. Terry got his feeding from every branch, every vine. Are you following me, brethren? And so for us to be here today, I sat there and I said, God, what am I to go up and say? Because I don't need a script to talk about Terry. You're going to go tell me, say, why you're talking too long now, which almost you're going to start saying. But I want to say to every family member from roughly in the green side of my father, the mocklocking side of my father, the side from my mother, we want to say thank you very much for investing in our lives and in today in particular in Terry's life. Because every part of Terry's life reflected part of what you have sown in his life. We know the rough times we come through, but we stood by each other. I'm going to ask you to, you know, just lift your hands and just say thank you, Jesus. Because had not been for God, we would not be here today. Remember, the, the, um, from my mother's side, the Russells, Uncle Lai, the Uncle Clinton, and Edith, now this is, and Frida, now this is. Everybody contributed to Terry. And we are giving God thanks. You may be seated. Finally, then, and the mic to Terry. Be cut to see on, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Terry, you can't get the mic again. To see on. <laughs> As a minister, I am really happy that I was the second to last pastor that pastored Terry. His last minister was Reverend Francis, who took over from the Flanker Church when I, I left in August. And I am so happy that our mother encouraged us when she got saved to give our hearts to God. And so we all grew up in the church serving God in this very church from before what it is now. And we want to give God thanks that today, you know, as a pastor, I can say to God be the, the glory. I want to personally say thanks to the Flanka Church for the way how you took on Terry. And you, you minister to him. And I, 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 through the connection of him being my brother, I could see your genuine love for Terry. Not because there was no other musician at the church, but your love for Terry spoke volume that I can tell anybody that Flanker ministered to Terry well. And I'm happy for the role that you have played in this funeral. And Rev, you, you, you hit it, the ball out of the park. Excellent. 
It's one of the best messages I've heard at a funeral that spoke true to the nature of the deceased. You hammered it well. And the connection that you had with Terry from our days in Sarsborough and Glen Levon, it, it, it could not go unnoticed. And so I just want to say thanks to, to, to my other siblings and uh, our eldest sister, uh, well, second, Carleen is here who is, she's going through a, 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 a grinding process. I'm going to ask you to keep her in your prayers. Minister Carleen, I should say. You know, and, and, and just keep the family in prayer. Because our last chord in this earth must be a good tune to God. And all of us have pledged that anything we want to hear from God is one thing we want to hear from God. It's well done. Man cannot pay you for the service that you give. Therefore, you cannot tune us well for us to submit to giving up serving God. We have been through it, and we have seen the sad part. We have seen the happiness part with family and friends. But we are laboring for one cause and for God's glory. Uh, and for, for the hospital, person from the hospital want to say thanks. The, the, the renal unit, I've been there many times without even saying I'm pastor. I came there as a brother. I came there as a, as a chaplain, and you don't know me, but I see you. But we want to say thanks. I wear many hats. And we want to say thanks to you for all that you have done to this brother who, if you had time, you would have spoken how much he ministered to you while he was sick. And again, I want to say to those who are not well and you're Christian, take a page out of this young man's book. Don't let sickness bar you from serving God because it's not an excuse. Work while it is day, because when the night comes, a time to go home. See ya. Yeah, we, we pause there. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here to share again. I won't be as long, all right? You're a shot. All right, so I just want to stand here to represent myself and Tony McLaughlin, my wife, and I will do this quickly. Her extended family is here. I want to ask them to stand, the Spencers. I'm asking you guys to stand. Wonderful. Church, can you put your hands together for them? And I'll tell you why. Thank you very much. You may be seated. All right. So they have journeyed from all the way from New York, Westmoreland, Kingston, and the whole place to be here. And I really appreciate it. So I stand to say thank you to the church. Thank you to all those who have contributed to Terry's life. Um, the list goes on. I can't, I can't start, right? But I know that some form of love, energy, some form of encouragement allows Terry to be so resilient, so robust, and so motivated. It doesn't just come from the family. It could never, right? But I want to say thank you again for everybody, and I don't want to start calling names, right? But thank you so much for being there for him. Thank you so much for being that support to him and also his daughter, Anna. And thank you, if thank you is not big enough or too much to say, well, meet me after church. You'll probably get a hug or a shake on. Uh, we probably have a nice little conversation, but I want to show you that we love you and we appreciate you supporting our family and Terry by extension. Thank you so much again. All right. Yes, yeah, so Carleen is coming, Minister Carleen. is coming at this time. We will stand with her here. And uh, I didn't mention my family because you, you saw them all. My wife earlier, Zari and Sang and Sian doing the technicalities. Zachary. My mother always call us different names, but we know which one we talk, she talking. <laughs> Everybody's name except the right
I greet you all, the reverend um, members of the church. What I'm going to say is just a synopsis of the journey of Terry's sickness. But I'll start from what is happening to me now. It feels like when Jesus had that mission to do and the weight was on him and he asked his disciples, can you pray with me? And they were sleeping and he went back again and he said, can you pray with me? Because the weight was so heavy. It was so heavy that it did not affect the spiritual part of him. Because my spiritual man is as strong as a lion. But it affected him as human. That he said, Father, if this cup could pass from me. But when he thought about the cost of us not being redeemed, he said, nevertheless, let thy will be done. When Terry took sick years ago with diabetes, he would call ever so often when he was on the clinic. And I give God thanks for all those nurses, my friend Sandra, the renal staff, and I'll specifically say those who helped. And I know where I'm going with this. It is very important, the word of God said, we must not forget the poor, the sick, the needy among us. We know that Terry's life is an example. But what we're going to do after this is another thing. I remember my mom died in Cornwall Original. on a chair. My brother died from aneurysm. He was left unattended on a bed. Hey, Dion, when he was an EMT at the airport, went to the hospital and recognized that he wasn't breathing and told the nurse at that time and I'm saying this publicly so that even the Prime Minister, Minister of Health can hear it because I'm, my brother is not going to go down without me causing a change. A change must take place. Accountability must take place. Too long we are sitting and not doing anything and we're just talking. A change must occur. And when the nurse was doing CPR when she find out he wasn't breathing, this is no lie. He told her that's not the correct way and I'm licensed to do it. She asked him to help. If it was in the United States, the lawsuit we would have been rich for life. And he started at CPR on my brother. And when everybody came and the line was flat, he asked the doctors, shock him again. He raised his hand and said, God, give my brother another chance. One little Chinese doctor said, okay, let's do it one more time. And every vital sign came back. Cornwall Regional said at that time I was in New York that, and what happened to my brother was Saturday morning they had to receive a certain amount of hundreds of dollars before they could do a scat gun on his brain. Now this was Saturday. Sunday came. He was in ICU when they revived him and Monday he died. We have lost too many now I'll say to you, 
I am a living witness and a living testimony. And I thank right now Janet Silvera, who is a journalist in Montego Bay, and I'll tell you why. When my brother went for Dallas, it's at one time, because every time he felt sick, he would go back to the emergency room. One doctor said to him, you again? You again? And my brother had to go back home. Couldn't breathe. He wasn't dialyzed for about three to four days. I called Janet Severa. And I said, this is happening to my brother. If, he does, if he's not dialyzed, he is going to die. She said to me, the only thing I can do for you, the private facility that they have, I can get the contact for the gentleman and reach out to him. Long story short, the owner lives in Florida and we made contact. His business place does not open on a Sunday. And he said, sell the money to me. I will call my staff and they will open the facility to facilitate your brother because he will die. I called them and they rushed Terry to the private facility. And he went there for a couple of times before he could get the amount of <laughs> the amount that he needed to stabilize him. After that, he got worse. The heart. I filed for him. But with immigration, you know, you have to wait. I told him his condition. They said, send us every single document from the hospital. And this is not where I'm telling you my pain is coming from. It's way back, morning, noon, and night. I'm on the phone, even when my mom was sick. And I tell you something. Immigration said to me, does he have a visa, a visiting visa? If he has that, he could come up with that visiting visa get his treatment and stay. How we do an adjustment of status? Terry was the only one who didn't want to travel. So he did not have a visa and I said, Terry, look at that. So when we contacted the doctors, they said, the condition of his heart, he cannot travel. So eventually he has to do the surgery. <laughs> now in doing the surgery, we started on it. The money wasn't a problem. They said it was two million plus dollars and believe me and i'm standing here it would have been covered because the doctor specifically says university hospital has to know where the payment is coming from so we have to give proof and i'll tell you something when I said, Terry, don't worry about it, he started crying. He said, sit. I was wondering where it's going to come from. Because I know now that if I don't have this surgery, I am going to die. Thank God for nurses like Sandra, who I reach out to. Michelle Davis in Florida, who contacted different doctors, the head doctors, to see what they could do. One doctor asked the question, how can a heart patient, a critical heart patient, be on a chair for three weeks? On a chair for three weeks. Move from the chair to be dialyzed. And I know when Terry is home from dialysis, the young man is here, they are drained. Something different is happening to the body. He said, sis, I am sorry if I could only lay down. I asked, can I buy a bloat bed for him to lay down on the floor? I was told it would not be allowed.
when the arrangement was finally made, we weren't expecting Terry to be home. We were expecting him to be transported from one hospital to the next. Sion had very important scheduled business overseas. I left my cap to him. Been there when I couldn't, when some of us couldn't. Coming from work, Uncle Patrick, you know the nature of fireman work. And he will be there, he's human. We had backup system. Auntie Gracie would be watching out. Auntie Jason would be calling. Auntie Bev would be encouraging. Auntie Dottie would be encouraging. We had a backup system. If Sion had to go, who would go to hospital and so on. So Terry was covered. We weren't expecting him to come home. This is how the devil works. The same day Sion flew out is the same day they sent him home and told him his family is responsible to take him to Kinska. I called Omar Morris, who I set up as a transport to take him. And I said, Omar, when I said, Terry, how are you feeling? He said, sis, I'm no better. I can't make it. I said, don't worry yourself. We're going to take you to Kingston. Sion got in touch with Tony's family. They were working from that end. I said, Sion, I'm going to buy my ticket. He said, no, sis, don't buy the ticket yet because we have enough support. When he is finished with the surgery, then come so we can get more help. When I spoke to Omar, I said, something in my spirit is telling me if they say he has blood clot in the heart, we cannot transport him in a natural vehicle. He has to be on oxygen. Because as much as I know in the healthcare, I'm also in the healthcare. And I know if the blood clot gets to his lungs or his brain, that's it. So Omar said he has a niece who is a doctor. We got in touch with her. She said, did they tell you about the private ambulance that we have? I said, no. She gave me the contact. I asked a friend to call. And we three way. They told me if they pick him up from the house, it's 1,005 Jamaican dollars. If they pick him up, 100,000. If they pick him up from the hospital, it's 90,000. I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. He's not well. I called Beauty before they... I said, beauty, can you go down and pack his bag and take him to the hospital? That is why, sir, you were calling him and you couldn't get him. Because beauty was at the house before day. She lived in Salt Spring and she got up 4.30 and went there. When she went there, took him to the hospital, I said, to the ambulance, tomorrow go straight to the hospital so you can transport it. Everything will be okay. By 11 o'clock the morning, they said they noticed something is liver, the enzymes has elevated. So he cannot move, they have to stabilize him. But from that time, they said they had to do another test that will tell the doctors if it's a triple bypass or a double bypass they need and they need that test. Now Terry could not do that test because they said something was too high in his blood. So they decided that instead of giving two dialysis, they would give him three to see if they could lower it so he could do the test and go on. It never happened because he wasn't stable. He was on a chair. Last but not least, all the time, he called me and he said, Sis, if I could only lay down, my bottom is sore. Marky has one leg. He said he wanted to go to the bathroom to do number two. And they told him they don't have a wheelchair to take him and they left him alone. I couldn't sleep. The Sunday morning, Sunday morning before he died, 
Michelle and myself, Michelle Davis, all the way in Florida, was on the phone with Terry, groaning. The Lord told me, call Anne and tell Anne to go there to hold his hands. That time the Lord knew that Terry must have been saying, I can't take it. But he wanted somebody to hold his hand. I couldn't get Sister Anne. And if you leave here today and don't know that God is real, listen to this. I couldn't get her. I left her a message. When Michelle and myself was on the phone with Terry groaning and telling the nurses, put oxygen on him. Terry said, Auntie Anne, I see Auntie Anne. So I said, maybe she got the message. Auntie Anne said, what message? I'm here because Zachary had an asthma attack. God allows Zachary to have an asthma attack to get Auntie Anne there. That Terry could see her, that she could place her hands on him and pray for him. And the Monday morning, Terry called me. Said, I can't take it. And he said to me, oh, the doctor is here. I said, okay, when the doctor is finished, call me. I didn't hear him call me after an hour. An hour and a half, I feel something start moving. I went outside and I'm walking around. I felt like running down the street in Atlanta because I could feel something. Until in the afternoon, they took me, Terry is gone. Immediately, I felt a pain here, straight down to the back of my neck. And because I know what that was, I jump in my car, I live an hour and a half away. And I called the doctor's office. And when I went there, the doctor said, what on God's earth is that? I've never had, my, my medical record is so spectacular. The doctor said, what on God's earth when I, or I couldn't even talk. I said, my brother, my brother. She said, I'm gonna give you some medication right now. And if this blood pressure does not move, I'm sending you to the hospital. I had to sit there for a couple of hours. They repeatedly did what they needed to do. Came down a little. They had to put me on anxiety medication, high blood pressure medication, five different medications I'm on. The least little thing, I'm jittered. But I know, I heard about the affliction of Job. My spirit man is strong. But my flesh has been touched. I misunderstood ever so often during this period. But I want to say, I want to do something for those people who goes to renal, you know why? We didn't know what Terry was doing sometime with his money. Terry would call Uncle Patrick, Auntie Gracie, everybody. Even though Terry have pocket money, but Terry was sharing. Ever oh, so often he would talk about those who have to travel from Trelawney and Anova, and, but I didn't get it. I didn't get it until when this young man that we picked up in the car, he has two o'clock um, dialysis session, and he said he will come to the funeral if we can pick him up at renal, and he can go back in time for two o'clock. Now listen to me, people. When this man said something to me, it broke my heart. One night he left. He didn't have what he needed to go home. He stopped at a police station when he reached Lucy. I don't know if it's Green Island or wherever he lived. The policemen said they can't take him home and he sleep on the street. Many of you may be on my Facebook. I have a group, a prior ministry that's online. And I'm launching a project and it's going to be well organized because my group is under my home church. This is the first time I'm saying it to pastor. And we have some connection going on now. And we are going to be raising money. It's going to be well monitored. 
and eventually we'll be able to get some form of transportation but we're going to make sure that if it's even once per month even the bus fear for one week of dialysis where that patient have to do two their bus fear will be covered put your hands together come on we have to create a change we have to create a movement we have to help the least that we can do like the good Samaritan let's put them on a donkey bring them to the inn say take care of them when I return I will pay you glory to God my brothers have already thanked everybody but I want to say Auntie Joyce son I have to call some name Uncle Patrick Auntie Grace he was a watchman when Sian have to go to work Auntie Grace every turn watchman and Uncle Patrick Miss Wint Miss Gloria watchman Shelley oh God beauty when, we, when he died Sian is in America he's in Canada I'm in America. We have to call our backup system. Uncle Patrick had to go to the hospital with beauty to go identify body and do what needs to be done. To while people, everybody calling. We have a network. We may not be perfect. Form a network and this church, this Glenavon New Testament Church of God. With my group in addition, what they have here is fire to the enemy's kingdom. Because the blessed and fortunate should not suffer. We must look around us and see the needy and do something about it. And as I close, I'm very hoarse, tell you, sick, weak. And I practice a song. And it's a good thing I recorded it. And I asked my family if it sounds good because I change up the words. But now I can't sing it, so I tell Zachary, even though it might not sound so wonderful, the same one that I sent to everybody, just play it for me. Just play it for me. As I close, glory to God. Give me the phone, give me the phone, give me the phone.
Thank you very much. wrenching just listening to Minister Carleen and I'm sure up to this point we were sad but it has made us even worse I don't know about anyone else I'm speaking for myself I have had three similar cases, but we won't go in there, but I feel her pain. I can't just imagine. I feel her pain. At this time, I will take my decrease, and I'd just like to extend once again to the family my sincere condolences. I can just imagine the hurt. I can't say how you're feeling, but I can just imagine the hurt. I will take my decrease and I'd like to thank all those on the various platforms that are watching. You have heard that you can visit YouTube, a drive will be on, and in any way that you can to contribute to the renal unit at the Cornwall Regional Hospital, please, please reach out. Today we are okay. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know. At this time, Reverend Williams, former pastor of this church, will be praying for the family. And I will then hand over to our host pastor. Thank you. For the family, the McLachins family, and um, I'm going to ask members of the family to be seated. And um, we ask the rest of the congregation, would you stand with us in solidarity as we seek trust in the Holy Spirit to undergird this family. The psalmist said, the eternal God is our refuge. And underneath are his everlasting arms. Psalm 34 verse 18 says that the Lord is near to those whose hearts are broken, crushed. And he rescues those with a contrite spirit. Verse 19 says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of their ball. And so with confidence and assurance, we say to the bereaved family, to others who are hurting, mourning, grieving, that your God, Jehovah, is still your refuge and strength is an ever-present help in time of trouble. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this time, this moment. It's a time when many hearts are broken and many are feeling very low in spirit. There is grief. There is sorrow. There is sometimes disappointment, discouragement, and all the things happen. But we are so grateful to you. We are so grateful to you that indeed you are still 
our rock. In a weary land, you are our shelter in the time of storm. We thank you. Indeed, Heavenly Father, we bow before you to say thanks that you are our refuge and strength, our ever present in time of trouble. So though the waters roar and the billows and the forces seem to be against us, thank you, thank you that they will not overthrow us, they will not destroy us, the family of Terry, the bereaved family, you have already organized and put in place all that is needed to sustain them yes. in this time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jehovah. You have never been surprised. Hallelujah. You have never been amazed. You have never been astonished. You are just God. You know the end from the beginning. So this day is just a day that you have made. And so as the people of God, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Jehovah, that those that put their trust in you shall never be ashamed, shall never be confounded. Thank you that our enemies shall come in one way and they shall flee several ways. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah that you have assigned your holy angels, legions of warring angels of the most high God, you have assigned unto your people, if they will only trust you, hallelujah, if they will only acknowledge that indeed you are God, unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable, unmovable, Jehovah, in your presence there is fullness of joy and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore you are god you are the almighty you are sovereign when you speak no one contends with you hallelujah when you open a door no one shuts it when you shut a door no one opens hallelujah you are eternal omnipotent omniscient omnipresent God Yahweh is your name some must go through the fire some must go through the flood some must go through the waters but all through the blood God leads his dear children we declare this afternoon amen that Jehovah Adonai is our shepherd and we shall lack nothing and the bereaved family here as they mourn, as they grieve, God, we thank you. Somebody raise your hand to the heaven, to heaven, hallelujah, to the almighty and decree with me today. The Lord bless the McLachlan's family. The Lord God, Jehovah, watches over you. The eternal shine upon you and be gracious to you. The eternal God, the most high, lift up his countenance to us and give you his shalom peace nothing missing nothing broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise and be made whole rise and be blessed of God you are blessed in your going out you are blessed in your coming in you are blessed when you lie down you are blessed when you rise up in the name name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth you are blessed hallelujah, yes. hallelujah. hallelujah. 
I bless the water you drink. I bless the food you eat. I bless the air you breathe. I release the blood of Jesus Christ in the atmosphere against you all evers. No evil shall befall you. And no plague shall come near your Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever. I pray in the fathomless billows. Would somebody just raise your hand, everybody with me, and say one more time, please. Shalom. Shalom. Jesus said, my peace be I give unto you, children of God. Colleen, Dean, Sean, Philip. Hallelujah. Above. Holy Ghost, peace, shalom, Sweep peace. Peace, the peace of God. My the peace that passes all understanding. Forever. God bless you. God bless you, Yahweh, Jehovah, Adonai. Rest. Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful peace. Come on, do it one more time before. Coming down. Lift up your hands as it's just look, just raise your hands and receive the peace of God in your soul right now. Receive the peace of God in your spirit. Every family member. and glorify God. Let everything that art breath praise the Lord. Before I make my final comment to this, 0260KM, you are blocking somebody at this moment. Could you please move your vehicle? Thanks. To God be the glory. Peace. My peace I give unto you. My peace I leave with you. Not as this world give it. Goodbye unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be. Hallelujah. Let it be uh, afraid. And we know that our brother is resting in peace. Sweet, perfect peace. We will. I don't have much to say. There is not much more to say. But to say to God be the glory. What a wonderful day. A wonderful Thanksgiving service. God bless you, Sister Brown. You did a marvelous job in moderating the service. And everyone would have taken part. To God be the glory. We will be recessing at this time to the, to the graveside, which will be at Illview Memorial Gardens. And we seek your cooperation, everybody, who can make it. The ministers will go first, then the choir, then the casket, then the family members, and the church in general. Let us go in that order. I invite the praise team to, to sing this song, When Peace Like a River. And when we are about to sing the chorus, we will begin to recess. God bless your praise team. When peace like a all bearers, please come, undertakers, 
everybody So 